So if you don't already know, I've recently switched from Canon to Panasonic, but since the R5C has come out, I wanna compare the two cameras. Now I know there's a huge price difference, but for me personally, the best image I've ever had from a camera is with the S5. So I wanna see if it stands up to the brand new R5C, or if it's worth getting the R5C at all. First of all, I just want to say a massive thank you to Hire a Camera for sending me all of this Canon gear. Now, if you are in the UK, definitely worth checking out. Amazing company. If you ever want to hire anything, definitely go to them and I'll leave a link in the description. So, what did you think to the comparisons? What I want you to do is pause me now and tell me which one was your favourite. Don't tell me which one, which camera you think it was. Just let me know what your favourite is because that's the most important thing. We're looking at the image. Forget all you know about cameras. Forget all you, what you've been told. Let me know which is your favourite and why. Right, so pause me now. Right, that should be long enough. So camera A was the Canon R5C and camera B was the Lumix S5. So when it comes to image quality, the S5 looks cleaner. At first glance, the Canon looks a little bit sharper, but actually that's because there's just a little bit more contrast baked into the image. But then when you look a bit closer and you zoom in, it goes a little bit grainy. And then when you add contrast to the S5 image, it sharpens it up, but it's super clean. The detail is so nice and natural. It's not over sharp. And then also there is a little bit of grain in the shadows on the Canon, whereas on the S5, it's definitely a lot cleaner. Now I've said this before, but Canon seem to have this distinct image and people like it because it's so easy to work with. You just drop your footage in, stick a LUT on, and it looks great. Whatever it is, it looks great. And that's because it kind of has this contrast curve built in. Now, that's good, but if you want more of a flat image to work from, you haven't got that. You can sort of bring it back a little bit because the dynamic range is a little bit better in this camera. With something like the S5, for example, that's got a more flat image and a cleaner image, you can actually make it look like the Canon, whereas you can't clean up the Canons to make it look like the S5. As you can see, all I've done here is just add a little bit of contrast curve and I've pretty much got it exactly the same as the Canon. When it comes to dynamic range, Canons haven't always been the best. The highlight roll off isn't great, but this is the best Canon that I've used in terms of dynamic range. It's really nice, obviously using C-Log3, so it is a lot better. But as you can see in the highlights in the sky, the S5 does a better job of preserving the detail in the highlights. And that's good, especially if you're filming a lot of outdoor content, the S5 is gonna handle it a lot better. And then in low light, the S5 was slightly better. I'd just give it the edge. It just seemed a little bit brighter and I was using the base ISO on both 640 on the Lumix and 800 on the Canon and I was exposing for the highlights. So I think they both did a really good job of keeping the detail but I think the S5 just had the edge there. All I did to the footage was apply a Rec. 709 LUT, made some tweaks and then colour matched them. That's all I did. I didn't grade the footage, I didn't put any sort of fancy LUT on there or anything. And that's because I just want you to see what these cameras are like in any scenario basically. I didn't want to grade it too far so I kind of kept it quite neutral. And on that note, I'm not going to tell you which one was my favourite because it's all subjective and everybody has different ways of colour grading the footage. So I'm just going to leave that down to you. You let me know which is your favourite in the comments and we'll leave it at that. Because in my last video... <sighs> Massive difference between these two cameras so far is the Lumix still has a full battery. Full battery, I've been using them exactly the same amount of time. Canon is down to 21 minutes left. It's quite a big difference. This is where the Canon really came into its own. It's got more slow-mo features, full 4K, 50 frames, full 4K, 120. The S5 at 50 frames a second goes down to 8-bit 420, and you can tell a difference. It's not the worst I've seen, it's still usable. I mean, I don't really use slow motion a lot anymore anyway, and it's there if I need it, and it's definitely good enough, but Canon definitely has the win on this one by far, because the image looks just as good as it does in 25 frames a second, whereas you do lose a bit of quality in slow-mo on the S5. Stabilization see what it's like, I'm holding both cameras, Canon, 
Lumix. It's a tricky one. The S5 wins hands down when it comes to stabilisation. It's just so natural, no wobble, no warping on the edges. The Canon's all right, but S5 definitely wins. You can actually see in some of the shots that the Canon is just quite wobbly. One thing I really like when using a camera is a nice image to look at while you're filming. The LCD screen in the Canon, I've always preferred, I think they've got the best in the game when it comes to the LCD screens. But the Lumix is definitely a close second. I actually don't mind it at all, really like it. Some other cameras that I've used don't enjoy looking at the image. It's not very inspiring whatsoever. Whereas these two, it's very motivating. They look great. The Canon's a little bit bigger than the Lumix, but the one on the Canon R5C is so good good it's the best one out of any Canon that I've ever used and it just makes you want to pick up the camera and use it more because it looks so good and the fact that it's a little bit bigger means you can have some more info displayed around the edges and with all the monitoring features that it's got built in and assist features it's good to have that extra room this is what the Canon looks like in a lift I haven't set the white balance floor, so it might be a bit warm it will be warm Canon R5C has loads of assist features and monitoring features and it's absolutely great to have those options built into the camera. The Lumix isn't far behind to be fair, it's really good for that, but the way the Canon is laid out is much more like a cinema camera would be. And that's great for somebody like myself who is definitely a video person over photography because there's certain things that you use as a videographer over photography. So to have dedicated video menus is a win. Because some hybrid cameras definitely stick to the photo style menus and they've just got video features built in. Whereas these two are very much video centric cameras in their own way. But I like the layout of the Canon R5C. And I think more cameras will start doing that soon because we're starting to see it a little bit more. Speaking of features though, I prefer the white balance features in the S5. There's just more customization in there. Canons have always been limited when it comes to video white balance. This is why I switched to Lumix S5. It's roughly quarter of the price of the Canon. Now that's insane because it stands up to this cinema camera. It's brand new cinema camera, whereas the S5 has been out for a few years now. And the image is amazing. It's still my favorite image that I've had in a camera. And it's got great features. So don't feel like you have to spend upwards of 4,000 pounds on a camera body to get a decent image. It's just not true. You don't have to. You can make this image look just as good as the camera. Canons. And that, that blows my mind. Because if you did need the extra features, you could get this camera, and then with the extra money, an external monitor, cage, all sorts of accessories, a bunch of lenses, and still have money left over before you even try and buy a lens for these cameras. So don't feel like Canon is the only option because it's not, you can get great results from other brands. Let me know which was your favorite in the comments. Let me know your thoughts. I love reading them. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for plenty more videos on the way. In the meantime, you can check this video out here. I'm also working on a how to set up the R5C video if you are interested in this camera. Until then, I'll see you in the next one and have a great week.